Hi everyone. Today, we're going to be taking a closer look at race result 12 and how it will make your life as a timer even simpler. Race result 11 has been around for over 10 years now. And the last big change to the way we calculate times came a few years back with the introduction of raw data mode. This rethink of how we handle our raw timing data gave even greater control and allowed for more complex timing setups. Now, with race result 12, we introduce splits, a quick and easy way to set up your race, giving even more automation in how the times are handled and calculated. But first, let's take a look at our demo event in race result 11. This file was set up with a marathon, half marathon, and 10K, where both our marathon and half marathon cross a split point on course before heading back to the finish line. If we look at our timing point setup, we have just three points defined. Our start and finish, defined as a single timing point, our split point, and our announcer, which was about 50 meters out from the finish line. If we take a look at our results setup, we have separate rules for the start, split, and announcer, and then again, two separate rules for both gun time and chip time at the finish. Following this, we need separate calculations for any legs or sectors, and also to recall time of day, since we're subtracting T0 in our timing point setup. Whilst still a relatively simple setup, the more splits we would add, the more calculations we would have to write for each as well. Switching over to look at the same demo setup in race result 12, you'll see it's exactly the same race. And again, if we look at our timing points, we have the same setup here too. So let's take a look at how this is set up in splits. Straight away, we can see a completely different table for setup. For each contest, we can now define our split setup. Of course, this can be easily copied over and modified for each if we need to, and we'll also define the time mode. This determines whether the contest should by default be scored by gun time or by chip time. We then set up each split point on course in the order they will be crossed. And this part has a few different settings which we haven't seen before. Once a split is named, we need to define the timing point to be used. This is where we can now also define a separate backup timing point to be used with an optional offset, so we could use separate main and backup timing points, which will now only use the backup if no time exists on the main system. Next, we define the type of sport. This is particularly important for defining the start as this tells the software to use the last time. This step isn't critical for other timing points as of now, however, it does then help provide some suggested settings for the following steps. Following this, we can also define the distance into the race, either from the start or from another split on course. And finally, the minimum or maximum pace, speed or time which can be defined in a variety of units according to your preference. This last setting is the most important for our split calculations, as this calculates a time window which is valid for this split, based on the minimum time or calculated using the fastest pace or speed and the distance for this split. Note that split windows are also calculated based on previous splits which have times recorded too. If you don't want to put a maximum time, you don't have to, but it can be useful to prevent later reads or for course cutoffs. Below this main split setup, we have our leg definitions, where legs can span multiple splits. In this example, we simply define first split and second split as we had in race result 11. However, of course, this really comes into play with multi-sport events such as triathlon, where we have our swim, bike, run, and transitions. The other change comes in our finish result, which is still used for our final ranks and official time. We now have an option to automatically use the last split, which will take either the gun time or chip time at the last split in our setup according to the time mode we defined for that contest. The start result has a similar option, which will also take the last start type split as the start result. Once this is set up, Similar to our raw data mode, everything is now calculated automatically and dynamically. But how does all of this work to give us what we need? For that, we're going to jump back to our race result 11 file and check out the participants results tab. Here, 
with our results set up, we see a long list of times for each of the results we had set up. On the right side, we see the relevant ranks. In race result 12, we see another nice simple table, showing for each split the time of day, time from gun, time from chip start, rank at that split, the sector time, which is the time from the previous split, and sector pace. You'll notice these last two columns are greyed out for the announcer, since this is set to an internal only split, so it doesn't affect calculations elsewhere or show in the selector outputs. Below this is a secondary table with our legs, showing our leg rank, leg time, and leg pace. If I flick to bib number three, you'll notice that our announcer is greyed out, since I've removed their time here, but in its place is a predicted time, which we can even click to use to create a manual time if needed. Predicted times are calculated from all splits once the first on-course split has been calculated. These predictions are based on current pace or speed and the defined fastest pace or speed for each subsequent split. Moving on to look at our output lists, we can see how easy it is to start using these splits. Each field name starts with the split name or leg name and then appends a period and the specific field we want to look at. We can see here our first split and second split, which are our legs, finish.gun, finish.chip, and even finish.pace. If I start typing a split name in the data box, then you'll see a long list of all the options available. Ranks, for example, can be called with split name dot overall, dot gender, and dot age group, and a whole range of other calculated fields are available too. There's an extensive knowledge base article explaining these options and how they can be built upon. This includes times, ranks, pace, speed, predicted times, gap times, and even more. We hope this gives you a quick idea on how easily you can start timing your races with splits. If you do have any further questions or need a little more help getting started, then we have a dedicated support team ready and willing to help. We hope you enjoy timing with Race Result 12, and thanks for watching.